What is Chimborazo? Well, it's a volcanic mountain in the Ecuadorian Andes, and technically speaking, it's the highest point on planet Earth. And everyone's going to say, what about Everest? Let me explain. The Earth bulges at the center. Because Mount Chimborazo is located on the equator, the summit of Mount Chimborazo is closer to outer space than Everest, the taller mountain. Chimborazo is located 20,564 feet above sea level. That may sound like a big number, and that's because it is. To put some perspective to this, we have Mount Washington, the highest peak in New England in the high altitude region, Mount Whitney, the highest peak in the continental United States in the very high altitude region, Mount Everest, the tallest peak in the world. The death zone is where there's not enough oxygen in the air for humans to survive. And a little bit beneath that, but still very well into the extreme altitude region, we have the summit of Mount Chimborazo. All right, so now we have a scale for altitude. What happens to athletes at altitude? You train and train and train and train. And then you're getting closer to the summit. You start feeling nauseous, dizzy, confused, out of breath. Is there a way to train for this? For every 1,000 feet you ascend, there's a 3% drop in the amount of oxygen. What that means for us, when we get to the summit of Mount Chimborazo, we're going to have less than half of the amount of oxygen that we have at sea level. This drastic oxygen deficiency has a negative effect on the human body, which is going to try and compensate in other ways to deal with it. If you have an increase in heart rate and respiratory rate, your body's going to try and take in more air and pump blood faster to get oxygen to where it's needed. This also can lead to restless sleep as your body's going to think that you're suffocating and startle you awake. You're not going to feel well rested at any point. Dehydration. The humidity is low. You're breathing this dry air faster and faster. At the lower air pressure, moisture evaporates quicker. All this means you're going to be perspiring and exhaling moisture at least twice as fast as you would at sea level, which, if you're not careful, can lead to rapid dehydration and become quite dangerous. Your body will redistribute blood to where it's needed most, your brain, your heart, your lungs, and away from other organs, such as your digestive organ. What this means is that people will likely feel a lack of appetite nausea, and could even start vomiting. This is often paired with a headache due to the additional blood flow to your brain. Simply put, you're going to feel like shit while attempting a feat on par with running a marathon with a fraction of the oxygen. Now for my impression of the end of a drug commercial. More extreme cases of altitude sickness can result in loss of coordination, ability to walk in straight line, hallucinations, fever, pulmonary edema, and cerebral edema. Any of these extreme symptoms could lead to a coma or death, and the person should immediately seek lower altitude medical care. <sighs> So, you still want to put your body through this. I mean, the view at the top must be breathtaking, right? Well, whatever breath you have left, that is. Acute mountain sickness is a neurological disorder, so it's primarily decided by genetics. This means there's no way to prevent the symptoms of AMS unless you're one of the lucky ones that has the high altitude gene. So given this, how can you optimize your chances of reaching the summit? That's a great question, and I'll be sharing some of my tips in my training routine, either in blog posts or videos leading up to the climb. I think people will find it useful because this type of training is good for endurance performance as well as fat loss.